Today we're going to be talking about what are functional core exercises. So in part one, we're going to look at a definition of what functional exercise is or what I think functional exercise is. And then in part two, we're going to start talking about the exercises that can, um, that can help us with our functional core exercise. If you want to build your core strength and stability, then click the link below and go through to how to build core strength and stability, my beginner's online 12 week program. On there, you have a full 12 week program that you can follow, it's all follow along workouts. Then when you get to the end of the 12 weeks, it opens up into the intermediate and advanced workouts where we start to introduce some weights um, into it and we will be talking through some of the core or functional core exercises that we're gonna be using today as well. Part one is what is functional exercise or what is functional core exercise? And most people think it's, a, um, it's a, an exercise that, that, is, that replicates everyday movement. So for example, it could be squatting down, which could be sitting, or it could be a deadlift, which could be bending forwards and picking some shopping bags up. And those are functional exercises, but it makes exercise quite limited. They are useful exercises to do, and they do enhance and help how we move around. So they are definitely functional exercises. But I try to open myself out and I look at a bit wider than this because I would say a functional exercise is an exercise that enhances function. So now it opens out to a greater array of exercises. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be looking at the deadlift, which is a functional exercise, which I would consider a functional exercise. But we're then gonna look at three exercises, and there are more, but we're just gonna focus on three that are gonna help and enhance the deadlift. Firstly, the deadlift. And how is it a core exercise and how is it a functional core exercise? Well, the functional part comes because it's that hip hinge, it's lift, it's bending, and then it's lifting. So that's the functional aspect to it. Why is it a core exercise? Well, the whole of the core needs to work. And because we come down into this position, or first of all, where is the core? The hips, basically from the hips all the way up to the shoulders. That's your core, your torso. So all of that is working throughout this exercise. So when we come down into the position, yes, the hips are doing the movement, so the glute max is doing the majority of the movement when we come into this position. But what your spine has to do, or what your torso has to do, is maintain the position. Because if we've got a weak torso, this type of thing will happen. So we'll get down here, and then because we're so strong at the legs, but weak at the core, that will happen. And the spine will bend, because the muscles can't hold the position of the spine. So what we need to be able to do is make sure, and this is what some of our exercises are gonna be focused on, is maintaining that posture of the spine. So when we come down into this position, we are able to maintain the position of the torso, which is essentially telling us we have good core strength and stability, which is what we need. Now, with that said, doing a deadlift and progressively overloading, so adding more weight and adding more reps and greater ranges of movement is going to be helpful for that. But there are exercises that we can supplement to either activate muscles before we do a deadlift or to help and enhance the deadlift that we do. So when we do progress, it's going to be that much easier and that much better when we come to do it. Exercise number one we're going to do is a plank. Very simple. As I said, there are more. So a lot of people are going to be saying the plank doesn't do this and the plank shouldn't do that and this is a better exercise and so on and so forth. And that's fine. Um, and for the most part, I will probably agree depending on the criteria that's used. But with regards to what we want from the exercise and what I've discussed in this video is that when we come over, we want these muscles to activate and these muscles to activate. And this is where the plank is so helpful because we are coming over into that horizontal position, albeit with our arms on the floor, but we're in that horizontal position. These muscles will be working. Obviously, these muscles are working as well. What we could do as well to enhance how that's working is when we come down into a plank, like I did then, we can lift an arm up. So more of the muscles of the back are starting to work. So what we've then got is we've got exercise, an exercise that's keeping us horizontal 
um, uh, horizontal to the floor, which is activating the back muscles and the tummy muscles as well. So we're getting that sort of whole torso being worked, which is what we want from the uh, deadlift. What we can then do with the plank is hold it for a long period of time. And that's gonna help build the endurance. So when we come to do it in the deadlift, we've got the endurance in, excuse me, in place, and we can, um, we can hold the position for a prolonged period of time. Exercise number two is a hip thrust. So where we've talked about the movement, where we come into that position, what we've got is the hip flexion and then hip extension. So we've got hip flexion, hip extension. Obviously we need our glutes working, so they can be, they can be strong, they've got endurance. So when we come down into a hip thrust, we're essentially doing hip flexion, hip extension, but led down. So we're able to concentrate a little bit more on, so we can set up the feet at the same width that we would have for a deadlift, could be narrower, could be wider. So we can set things up, then we can have one hand on the back, one hand on the torso, and then when we hip extend, we come up into as full extension as we can get without arching the spine. So we can have the hands on the torso to make sure that the spine isn't ex overextending. We've got good squeeze with the glutes. So again, we're enhancing and making sure our ability to deadlift is going to be that much more effective. Because what this will do is when you come into hip extension, you'll get much more glute, or you'll feel much more glute activation when you get up into this um, extended position. You'll feel it much more naturally as well. When you come up into a deadlift, you'll come into here, you may not be able to feel the, the glute max squeeze in this position. You may feel that you need to come through into this position or you may just not feel it at all. But going through the, um, the hip thrust allows you to get that sort of brain and muscle connection of going down here and then squeezing the muscle. So then when you come up into the deadlift, it's much easier to extend and squeeze the muscle and stay nice and upright, which is what you want. Finally, exercise number three is the single leg Romanian deadlift or the single leg RDL, which is very simply coming into this position and up. So where a, an RDL or a Romanian deadlift is this position, down and up, we're doing exactly the same, but on one leg. So we're just, again, enhancing the stability through the ankle, the knee, and the hip, which if we can get much more stable here, we're gonna be even more stable when we're here because we're gonna be able to get much more muscle activation if we're in a single leg stance. So when we then translate that into the what is effectively the double leg stance, we're gonna be much more effective at it. What we've also got with that, not only have we got the stability of the ankle, the knee, and the hip, again, as I mentioned with the plank, with the body coming over, horizontal, we've got much more activation from, um, from the lower back and the upper back. So again, we've got that muscle activation that we need. So when we come down again with two feet on the floor, it's gonna be much more effective because we're gonna have primed muscles, they've got the endurance, they're gonna be working that much more effectively when it comes to doing that hinging or that hip flexion movement. So it's those three exercises that can help enhance a deadlift because of all the components that make up a deadlift, be it um, the body coming over horizontal, the stability through the legs, the activation through the glutes. So that is what I would describe being a function, or that's what I would describe being functional core exercises. Not only the bending and lifting exercise itself, but all then the exercises that open up and enhance that movement. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you've liked it and you wanna hear more, hit the subscribe button. And if you have a question or a comment, please do leave it below and I'll do the best I can to answer it. My name's Chris from Christopher Hole Training. I'll speak to you soon.